smoking But when they hear this song They'll learn there's more to token 25,000 different things we can make from it And if we give it a chance We'll save the blinking planet Food, fuel and medicine Necessities for life A benefit to all of us I wonder and delight Reading this smelly weed There's more to meet the eye So much, much more than smoking It can cleanse our dirty skies How marvellous. I do love that song. It's Hempworks. It's time for hemp. Uh-huh. And tonight my lovely guest is Richie again. Hello, Richie. How are you doing? Hey, Steve. Really good, man. How are yourself? I'm pretty stoked, actually. I've had a... The weather's been a bit crap, but I've had a really, really good day today. So that's quite nice. I've been with my friends from uh, Hempworks right, Evolution in Brighton. That change everything all around when you pulled the theme out? What? Hello? <laughs> Says <laughs> we have other voices on the line with us, Richie. Today, yeah, the web, we the are not alone, not, brother. We're not alone. We're not alone, no. And today, our website went down as well, so we don't quite know what's happened now. So you have to bear with us. Oh, okay. But I must say, the line's very clear tonight, which is really good. So, what have you been up to since we last spoke? You know, uh, marching on with with all the events we're working on, Steve. We've got the uh, the big seminar coming up in October, the Wellbeing Now seminar. And yes. that's just become, you know, more and more fun to be a part of and help facilitate um, than I ever imagined, actually. Um, the the people we've got featuring at, at that seminar have just made well, it Come on, give joy. us a full expose. I know about it, you know about it, but I bet there's millions of people out there that don't know about it. Yeah? Well, so what's, is, ha- um, what's, this... What's this, what is this? What's happening? This is an event, and it was born out of um, knowing through personal experience um, what really powerfully works in order to help us heal and thrive. And then connecting over the years with so many people doing wonderful work and um, doing work that works and helping people and feeling that... um, you know, there was a, there was a need for an event that really pulled these worlds together between um, emotional, psychological well-being, the mind-body connection, and also integrative nutrition and holistic lifestyle coaching. And so, what we did is we put together this this event and um, asked all the people we would have loved to be in the event to make it exactly you know what it needed to be. And um, you know, everyone said yes um, from. Uh, Tanya Alexeva, who's now Tanya Mayer, um, now she's been, uh, got married, Tanya Alexeva, you know, one of the leading raw foods experts and wellness coaches in, in the country, um, Saskia Fraser, another wonderful uh, raw food and wellness coach, Kyle Viali, who's simply one of the most knowledgeable nutritional experts I've ever met, um, to David Hamilton, um, you know, what the probably the most popular author of Hay House um, we have in the UK, um, speaking on the mind-body connection and he's, he's wrote best-selling books, wonderful books like uh, How the Mind Can Heal the Body and uh, Sandy Newbiggin who's, uh, who teaches a modern meditation technique and uh, again a best-selling Hay House author, Tim Van Der Vliet, another Hay House author, uh, author of the celebrated book Spiritual Awakening, uh, The Easy Way and, uh, and Jamie Smart, who is also the best-selling book, Clarity. And, um, you know, his guidance is just life-changing, as it is with all of these guys. But they're all at the same event and uh, over two days. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just delighted. And when, not only have we got this event and we have we got all these, these incredible speakers and experts, but it's also really wonderfully accessible. You know, we've managed to do this for, um, at the moment, the early bird prices are running at £55 for the weekend and 35 for a day. And uh, whereabouts, just, is, whereabouts is the event? This is in South End on Sea, Essex, UK. South End, that's a nice place to go. It is. It, this was another another part of the, um, the vision, actually, Steve. It was to, yeah. to have it outside of London, yeah. somewhere... Uh, 
that was a bit more open. And yeah. um, South, South End became the perfect venue because there are two main train lines uh, direct from London, and there's also a domestic and international airport. Um, yeah. So we've got people come flying over from Ireland and Amsterdam already, and uh, yeah. and you know who knows where else. But um, and you can get some very good value uh, flights, and of course, um, good value accommodation options as well compared to London. So it became a really good choice, um, as well as it being very local to me and me being and me, very it's positive. quite local to me. Yeah. So there's a good choice yeah, well, to me too. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> well you're done, welcome, you. Steve. I like that. Yeah, you've well, you... a good venue for me and you. That's great. I must <laughs> well, admit, though, well, part... right, no, just take it slightly away from that. I think that's great because I've used to do loads of events in London at the um, Olympia and Elf's Court and XL. The problem in London, right, from my point of view, is one, it's very difficult to get to because of all the road congestion, charging, parking, da 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 da. Normally, when you go to an exhibition like that, if you're a trader, you're taking a van, yeah, and mm. it's not easy taking a van into central London. And then you've got the added expense of obviously congestion charges, yeah, and then you've got accommodation because it really is so expensive to stay in London. Well, I know, because I've got some friends down at South End, and I was going to go and visit them. And you've got loads of good B&Bs down there, loads of reasonably reply. And at the end of the day, who really wants to go to London anymore? Uh, <laughs> nice, they go down to the seaside. Uh, well, that's now, part of the idea. See, we, we, you know, yeah. London's just grey and dusty and full of people, and it's not even a really the London vibe. I don't even get it anymore. It's just... <laughs> I don't know what that <laughs> London vibe is. It's alien to me. Yeah. It was yeah, at least well, a nice it's, seaside it's, resort. It's a nice place for a venue like that. Do some of stuff like that. Yeah, but that's what we, that's what we thought. It can it can be a bit intense. Yeah. Uh, you know, a day visit or a weekend visit to London. Oh. Um, and then you know you 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 spend a lot of the the day perhaps um, kind of acclimatising to the experience of the event. Um, yeah. and kind of shedding the feeling of, of the, the the travel into London or the experience of being in London. Um, yeah. You know, so that that was part of the vision, as well as it being local to me and wanting to, um, you know, passionately think, feeling that we should all be more involved in our local community and whatever yeah. it is we have to, offer, whatever it is we have to offer out there, um, yeah. to certainly make some time to offer it on our doorstep. Exactly. And so, um, you know, bringing all of that together was really, you know, the intention for this event. Yeah, think lo local act global, isn't it? Yeah. Bring yeah, it yeah absolutely. This is, I mean, well, no, anybody who's not been to South End, by the way, South End is a nice, it's a it's an interesting place to go to. You know? Sort of a bit historical, South End. But, yeah, it's, like, it's got a lot going for it, and I tell you what, it's got become a far. I've seen it. I've seen it through a new lens as well. There's a lot of parks yeah. and a lot of there's woods yeah. and there's like a place of historical interest. We have the Priory and Priory Park of the old um, the older uh, monks uh, habitat there, and. Yeah. Um, it's, it's it, you've got the elevated sea views as well, which is something yeah. that's really wonderful to enjoy. Yeah. So it, it's got a lot going for it as well. It is actually very near to London. London's very accessible to yeah. South End, but it's far enough. It's far enough away as well. Far enough away. To keep the riffraff out. <laughs> <laughs> keep the riffraff in London. Ah. It, it's, also, that, that any, affects any, your price as well because obviously you're not paying London prices for your venue. Um, because exactly. when you mention fifty-five pound. To go and see that amount of speakers, well, mm. that is actually an incredible amount of value for money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, it allowed us, you know, with with a lot of diligence and hard work to keep the costs down on all fronts. It allowed us to offer, you know, a ticket value that you you know you could just never get in London, and um, to have uh, twelve speakers over two days um, to offer a, a, that for the early bird price of fifty five pounds. It was just yeah. it made the whole thing come alive for me because it suddenly made it accessible. Um, in, a, in a new way to, to people that are in the Essex area and South End area, yeah. it made it very accessible. And to anyone doing the travelling, the lower cost of the ticket um, will, will will kind of counteract the, well, the cost of travel. Well, I mean, we're down in East Sussex, so we're your sort of neighbouring county. And I think from from where I am, Hastings, that's out. I mean, it's only about an hour and something. It's not that far. Yeah. About the same amount of time it takes me to travel to London. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. So, have you had good pickup on this? Is, is there much interest? 
It's been it's been wonderful so far. We've had a lot of you know people really responding to the um, the intention behind the event, and it it seems like it is uh, as intended a quite a unique event in um, you know the diversity of, of of wellness experts and approaches that we've we've got there. Um, and it's really time it's really time to to bring that those worlds together um, very clearly. You know, it's really time to um, to bring the worlds that we talked about in, within wellness together. So um, people recognise that it's just not all about one thing. The um, you know the the big uh, misadventure sometimes is to to find something that's uh, some very powerful information and then um, get all hung up that it's all about that. And that sometimes can happen in the world of nutrition. We can um, you know get hung up on it all being about the food, and mm. you know that, that really isn't the case. And 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 in the same uh, sentiment, if we come from the mind body uh, perspective as well, which is a quantifiable, scientifically quantifiable reality, the mind body connection. Um, if we get all hung up in there, we may overlook some of the things we're actually physically putting into our bodies as well that's going to have a significant effect. Mm. So to bring these worlds together in the right way for people and just to reveal the clarity and simplicity actually that, that exists within these wellness fields because because of all the information and all the misinformation and all the contradictions out there, it can be very puzzling. And these guys that we've got there, you know, they've got a very clear um, an ex- exceptionally expert uh, perspective, and they've got a very clear and concise message as well. That are the heart of what where they're coming from. So, you should people should leave uh, feeling informed, but also empowered and able to actually make whatever change they need to make in whatever direction they feel they need to. Yeah, and, and these guys make it so accessible, don't they? They make the route very easy, very show people how to get there. Isn't it? And, and again, there seems to be a, a, an amazing um, upturn of people now wanting knowledge about all things. I really have noticed this in my own personal life and the public that surround me, that people are really starting to talk about things at the moment, which is nice. Because it all starts with a conversation, doesn't it? You know, Unless yeah. people talk about these things, then they remain in the dark sort of thing. But at least once people start talking about it, then we can cause a reaction, and then that reaction leads on to people like yourself putting together unique venues with absolutely top quality speakers who are then showing the general public how they can access a better quality of life. Mm. Well, this is, you know, it is an exciting time, really, because with all the challenges we have, at the same time, we have this incredible potential and possibilities because people have come, in, in mass, people have come to the point of recognising that we're lied to and we're misled. Um, mm. You know, whether someone is um, um, believes this comes from a conspiratorial aspect or people just recognise it, it's a natural consequence of the kind of structured economy and culture that we have. It's yeah. a natural consequence be lied to to be misled because quite simply if you're in business and you're competing with someone it doesn't pay yeah. to be on i mean if your if your product isn't as good as the next door store you, yeah. you, you certainly can't tell your customers that <laughs> you know and so no that, it's very difficult it is i don't know are you, are you familiar with a, a company called the tridos bank they are an um, ethical bank and when they first started the whole of the banking world laughed at them because they said there is no way you can be ethical in the banking world. Fortunately <laughs> enough, they did disprove that that theory and they've been going about 25 years now and they're a very good bank that doesn't get involved in arms or dodgy deals and they've managed micro sort of financing and micro loans and put groups together. So yeah, it, it's very difficult to be in business and tell the truth, but nevertheless, it really is the only way to be in business long term. Oh, it's yeah. the only way now, Steve, because yeah. we've got the connectivity now of conversation between us all. The truth has to remain, you see. It's just it's just impossible to pull the wool over our eyes um, forever. Um, I'm, right now, actually, I'm, as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at the website, I'm seeing um, one of the speakers, uh, Jamie Combs. And Jamie yeah. Combs, um, he's the guy I think about when I think of ethical business, because... Um, you know, he, he speaks on, on enlightened entrepreneurism and inspired leadership, which is yeah. relevant for, you know, your whole, but not just business. And he, he developed a brand called um, Naked Whole Foods, which uh, they make naked bars. I don't know oh, if you've ever right. come yeah, across Yeah, I quite them. like them, actually. I think they're rather and, good, those naked bars. Yeah, they're, they're great. They're wonderful. And it's all whole foods. They're fruit and nuts smooshed mm. together, as they say it. And it's all raw. 
And um, you know, Jamie, he would he come from a fitness background, and he he came from a passion um, because of all the misleading information about food. You know, there was all this health claims made about processed foods. You know, like you can process a food down to uh, so it's completely denatured, and then add some nutrients back in, and it and make health mm. claims about it. And so he became really frustrated at that, and so he channeled that passion to creating a product and a brand in order to counterbalance, in order to offer something different. And now he's made those naked bars because of the way they've been able to flavor them naturally with yeah. just the modest amount of uh, cocoa powder and, and yeah. natural flavorings. They now compete on the shelves with, with these huge brands, um, you know, which, who are making basically junk bars. Oh, absolutely. Them, yeah. Those healthy oh. cereal bars. Because yeah, I don't. So we've got the oh, turning point with right. companies like that. Yeah, because they, they, they keep bars in the supermarket. I don't go to the supermarket very often, very, very rare. Yeah, but I always make a point when I go to the supermarket of buying all the naked bars because they got a whole. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And um, and free. oh, one, wonderfully, everyone. Um, we've got you know everyone coming. We'll we'll get some um some naked bars in their goodie bags when they arrive as well because. Uh, um, Jamie's company's kindly donated those <laughs> for the event. He's going to feed <laughs> us. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> no, wherever <laughs> the guy goes, he, he's going to do nine bars and nutritional bars and raw bars. Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's great because a lot of the time when we think of healthy eating, uh, you know, we, we didn't necessarily think about snack bars and things like that. Oh. Um, you know, these kind of products, you know, are wonderful because they're a wonderful way to transition into a healthier lifestyle and they're a wonderful treat for example we eat um, a very clean whole food diet typically um, you know we're not completely obsessive about it but that's the way we eat here and I've got a four year old daughter naked bars are fantastic for her um, yeah. you know as a, as a treat and she, she perceives them as a, yeah absolutely she perceives them as a treat and gets as excited about them as I would have about a Snickers bar when I was a kid you know yeah Clever. I've got a friend of mine actually, seeing as Washington, we might as well mention Washington today because Washington has sort of opened up its pot shops and uh, it's all legal. Uh -huh. And there's a friend of mine that's actually been making uh, nutritional bars, particularly for that market. Yeah. And she's infused them because it's all legal. She's got the medicine bars infused with the THC oh, wow. and CBDs. And so yeah. thoughtful of her, right? Because she knows people that are going to be using her bar most probably are using it for medicine and people that tend to ingest it through food bars are more people with like really bad MS or with or bad arthritis or Parkinsonism, right? Which makes it, and I never thought of this, right? When she told me this, I just want to give her a big hug. She's actually designed the wrapper so that a person that's not, you know, with MS, or Parkinsonism, or really bad arthritis, it's easy for them to open. Oh, Isn't that thoughtful? Because she knows where her market is, and she's yeah. put her head on and thought, right, how do these people perceive it? Yeah? And of course she you know, realised it's very difficult for them to open wrapping. Yeah? Yeah. And again, she's done an eco wrap around it too, which is brilliant. So it's a really nice presentation. I hope she's doing really well there today in Washington. I know she's doing a lot. Okay. This is what happens when you switch your focus and energy from um, just trying to manipulate people into yeah. consuming what you want to consume, and you switch yeah. it from what's helpful for people, yeah. and you create these wonderful products and these wonderful things. And you know, you know, make no mistake about it. Our focus and attention is a must shift in that way, and it is when you look at what's available now in the last uh, uh, five, even five, few years. Um, you know, it, it's remarkable. I mean, you can now get um, kombucha, um, you know, this wonderfully therapeutic and healing tea, a probiotic, you know, which um, is in a different league from anything you can get supplement-wise. It's a traditional yeah. way to make a probiotic drink. Um, and, you know, the health community has known about this for a while, but you can now get this in a bottle in health stores and you can get it in supermarkets. Um, and uh, there's one wonderful product it's called Equinox Kombucha, yeah. And uh, you know, speaking about these kind of good guys, again, the guys carrying uh, blue and green lightsabers while they're, you know, while they're engaged in business, um, these guys are Equinox Kombucha. They're actually developing a foundation where 50% where of their profits will go to to help 
um, you know, wonderful projects and charitable um, endeavours. Um, so those guys, are just, you know, so when you're, again, when you're, you're not, when you're drinking a kombucha, um, Equinox kombucha or something like that, it's not only good for you and it's good for the planet in all these ways, it's also wonderful because you're putting your money to people that actually care. Yeah. And that, that's, that's conscious consumerism and that, that's a huge instrument of change because, of course, you know, the future will be finite and so we will decide how it's financed by how we spend our money. Um, so Absolutely. Huge vote, with the, vote with the money. That's the power exactly. they've given us. Yeah. We have the power yeah. and this, when, mm. you, when you work this one out, the joy of this is you don't have to take a train to London to go to a protest. You can do this protest sitting at home. Just don't spend no money. One day, yeah. everybody's got to get together, right, globally, and we go, right, today, no stocking up, right? Today is the day we don't spend any money. We don't pay yeah. no bills. We don't and go to the shops. We don't know. All of us stop spending money. And the power of people will realise how vulnerable they are. Yeah? I know they sit there twiddling their thumbs going, they've got to spend some money tomorrow or the next day, but it will... <laughs> give a very positive sign that without us their money is worthless and the only reason they got money is because we spend it and i reckon we should have a day off from spending it and yeah. it's the easiest then, protest in the world you ain't and then on a day-to-day -day basis on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis you know if you're if you're putting your money to to ethical yeah. business you know yeah. it can be more expensive to buy better products but the mantra is uh, buy better use less you know, become yeah. more conscious of, of your yeah. consumption, how much you're using and where you're putting that money. Yeah. You know, it's a wonderful thing to do because you're suddenly using healthier, better products. Yeah. You're having better products in your home and you're using better products that you're, you're, you're consuming yourself. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, there's, there's no downside to it. And becoming a little bit more conscious about how much you use of a product because it's a little bit more expensive because it's actually, it's actually a good product. That's a good thing too. That's a good thing for us, to, a good way for us to live. That's and it's a wonderful thing, example, to show our children as well. I love showing my daughter the example of being conscious of how we're spending our money. Um, yeah. And, you know, she understands why we go to charity shops. She's four years old, but she understands why we shop in charity shops above and beyond oh, any I other place. I love charity shops. That's one good oh, thing that's really happened in England, charity shops. Huh? Oh, man, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, my daughter got Christmas cards from the, the old ladies in the charity shop. <laughs> you know, you know you're doing something right. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'll tell, I'll tell you a little story about one, because I'm, I'm a bit of a charity shop blackguard, mate. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I spend a lot of time in charity shops finding bits and bobs. Um, there's a beautiful one down by me. It's the local hospice one, St Michael's. And it's, a, it's the old style one. It ain't all been done up like the modern ones. It is the little old ladies, and it does smell a bit musty in there. But my God, you can find some good bargains if you go rummaging around. And I've gone in there because charity shop shopping, you have to get in a bit early, you see, right? You've got to know the times of days and things. <laughs> There's an art behind it. So I've got down there. There was something I had my eye on. I got down there at about 9.30, 10.30 in the morning, and they were all drinking glasses of wine. And I, I thought to myself, oh, maybe somebody's passed over and they're having a little drink for them or something. You know, that's his ass piss and they're quite old. And I just said to her, I said, oh, you know, what are you celebrating? You're all having a drink. And she just looked at me and she said, we're celebrating being alive. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. They were all having a little sip of wine <laughs> first thing in the morning because they was alive. I thought, what better thing to celebrate? <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I love, I love, I love stories like that, and I love also, you know, um, people, uh, you know, in their advancing years who enjoy things like having a drink. Um, yeah. You know, it kind of brings in, again, it brings in the other elements um, that things aren't exclusively about nutritional excellence. You know, yeah. um, we're actually. We see in study after study, epidemiologically, that um, yeah. people that actually drink moderately outlive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those that don't drink, don't, don't drink at all, they're teetotalers. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, that's a, that's a, a general statistic. Yeah. That's an average. Yeah. And I mean, don't course, get me wrong, I'm not uh, promoting sort of drinking at 9.30 <laughs> or 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> but, you know, these were pretty old people and they had lived most probably <laughs> through two world wars. And I had been in there a lot of other times. They didn't drink every morning, by the way. <laughs> it was just obviously somebody had brought a bottle of wine in and they thought, butter it, why wait? Crack it up. <laughs> and they were so proud. She looked at me as though, 
why are we roasting? You know, like, isn't it obvious why we're drinking? <laughs> oh, I just love it. Yeah, it was a very refreshing view on life that morning. <laughs> well, so cel- celebration is an intrinsic yeah. part of being healthy. Um, you know, celebration is so important. Feelings of excitement and enjoyment. You know, anything we're doing or being, we have to really, uh, it has to be enjoyable. We have to get a good sense of well-being from it because that, a lot of the time, is a determining factor in our health and not necessarily what exactly we're doing. Um, so, you know, that's why, you know, you get so many stories of people in their, you know, incredibly old age that, you know, have been smoking cigars since they were 12. Yeah. <laughs> And you know yeah, these exactly, kind of things. Yeah. Um, well, I live on three <laughs> Cuban cigars a day. So, yeah, some, some they enjoy. You know, they really are enjoying it, and no, are not necessarily, and they're embracing life. Um, of course, I'm not saying everyone should smoke cigars or anything like that. Exactly, we're not saying that at all. Health. But there, there is certain things in life, especially older. When you get elderly, you can get away with a few things, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And a glass oh, of wine yeah. at ten thirty in the morning, as you say, it uplifted the spirit. And I'll tell you what. I don't actually drink, but it uplifted my spirit that day. <laughs> <laughs> so it made me feel good. <laughs> it's important to feel good. Yeah. It's important to feel good. Um, we, you know, this is, you know, generations gone by, they knew, and we've kind of lost this connection to making sure, you know, we're actually celebrating life and we're enjoying it. Um, we've got so, we've, we've been seduced into becoming so neurotic about everything. Um, and it's understandable because there's so much out there that's detrimental to our health, so much chemistry, you know, and so so much deceit, so many things that shouldn't be in our food or in our household products or in our air. Um, so it's understandable, you know, that the effect of that is becoming a little bit neurotic about it. But that neurosis is actually more damaging to us than these damaging, these toxic chemicals, because through stress and through these kind of mental dynamics, we end up cultivating uh, toxic chemistry within our own bodies. And so we're almost nourishing ourselves with a toxicity while we're trying to avoid it from the outside world. So, you know, there's a balance that has to be struck and it comes through the empowerment of knowledge. It comes through knowledge and understanding in both the fields of nutrition and the mind-body connection as well. When we understand those, then we can actually kind of have this wonderful middle ground and integrative ground where we, think, you know, well, this is, um, this is what I'm going to kind of be the basis of my lifestyle and this is what I enjoy. And we're kind of going to bring those things in together to make me the healthiest and happiest I can be. So, you know, that's, a, that's really the, um, the enlightened yeah. perspective of it all, really. Yeah. Also, as well, again, I'm not a great Bible basher or anything, but apparently that was, a, that was in, in the good book. Apparently, it was a typo because it said in the good book, go forth and celebrate. Because back in the days of old, before the printing press, the monks would sit in cloisters in a cold little room and basically handwrite, copy out the Bible. Yeah, right. and every now and then, once a month, the abbot would come round and check it all for typos and spelling mistakes, and they reckon it was a, a typo. It should have been, they put go out and be celibate, and it should have been celebrate, <laughs> and they missed it. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, you know, that's quite, quite the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> would have made what more sense than that. This is like go made... forth and celebrate. <laughs> Don't go forth and be celibate because you're all end up dying. <laughs> <laughs> Lack of children. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, for me, a lot of uh, when we look at um, you know a healthy mind and healthy practices like meditation, um, yeah. you know, for me, things either fall into uh, appreciation or celebration. Those are two of the healthiest ways to express ourselves. Mm. Be thankful for what we have and to yeah. celebrate uh, what we're experiencing and what we are, uh, what yeah. life is. These are these are most of the way I try and channel my uh, my focus falls into either appreciation or celebration. You know, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I wake celebrating, Stephen. I really do, and I think I, I'm. You know, you can probably relate to that through your experience. Um, Actually, you know, I'm really you've... bad. It, it takes me ages to get started in the morning, and because I don't do caffeine and nicotine and all those other kickstarters, it does take me a while to get going. But I do celebrate. I tell you what, I do celebrate list. my food in the morning, my first juice go. of the day. I really do celebrate that. Uh, it's so life giving and so nice, and it's just thinking about how the food was grown and what I'm going to do with it, and how he's going to act inside my body. Yeah, so that's a nice yeah, exactly. celebration. Those are a lot. Of, that's a lot of them. A lot of those kind of experiences with healthy, 
uh, lifestyle protocols, healing, uh, natural protocols. And yeah. that loss, because we don't necessarily talk about that feeling of excitement and that feeling of thankfulness we have when we're doing it. And when we discover these foods, discover this way of eating that benefits us so much. Um, but it's a really important part of the story. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are what we eat. <laughs> Simple. And, and, you know, and we, you've only got to look, we are, look at the supermarket for that one. You know, I'm not saying everybody that goes in the supermarket is a beast, but seriously, people, sometimes I, I go down and then one of my occasional visits into that horrible place to grab things that you can't grab anywhere else. Uh, I think most probably can, but I'm just too lazy to do it. But, you know, you've only got to look. They've got two trolleys full of what, if I, well, I couldn't eat any of it that was in some of these people's trolleys because it ain't food. Yeah. And then yeah. you look at them, you look at their skin condition and most probably the weight, and you think, well, love, if you're eating that, that's why you're feeling like that. It's like, hello? <laughs> There's no food you know, in this is, this is, yeah, that's, yeah, we, it's, Isn't it incredible? Like, people often ask us about, you know, our daughter, you know, how, how is it when she's at a party or something like that? Well, she doesn't actually see it as food, that stuff that she doesn't eat, processed foods. She's, no. You know, it doesn't register to her as food because no. it's not the, it's not what we eat as food, and she sees it as kind of bizarre, you know. As she does actually with with me eating, you know, we're vegetarian, and um, yeah. um, you know, this isn't something we've had to impose, uh, in you know, on Emily as such as yeah. just be so frank with her when she asks questions, you know. Yeah. So so what is that? We say, oh, that's actually an animal, and she's like, that's really weird. <laughs> and for her <laughs> perspective, I've never encountered it. Um, yeah. It's weird to her, and so she, um, even though she's very young, we really make her decisions for her. Of course we do. Yeah. Um, at her level, at her stage, she also makes the decision herself, and yeah. that's kind of wonderful. Um, uh, you know, not that uh, you know I have any ideology uh, to impose on anyone else, but um, this is you know our family choices, and it's just interesting to see how that works for you know a child, how her perspective is of it. Um, and, you know, but it's not all about me. Of course, if there's any uh, processed uh, vegetable products, you know, she just won't gravitate to that. She'll gravitate to what she recognizes as food. Yeah. Um, and your perspective changes even as, uh, as you get older and you shift and you move towards whole foods and things. You start, it, you know, when people say, oh, don't you just walk past a donut store and think, I really want... No. No, because you walk past no. it. You don't even look at food no. anymore. No. Oh no! Right, you know? I've got, right, we got to go for a break. We got to go and do a break. But I'll tell you a funny story when we come back about smelling of okay. food. Yeah, Are we gonna do a break, Casper. Yeah. has helped approximately 150,000 patients obtain their medical marijuana permits to legally possess, grow, and use medical marijuana. If you have chronic pain, multiple sclerosis, or any other neurological degenerative disease, or if you have any gastrointestinal disorder such as GERD, irritable bowel syndrome, or if you have AIDS, cancer, spastic disorders, seizure disorders, or glaucoma, Call us at 1-800-723-0188 or visit us online at hemp.org. Again, the number is 1-800-723-0188 and the site is hemp.org. In need of a ganja vacation? Hot Box Jamaica. Chill. Relax and burn all day while watching the amazing ocean view. Listen to the birds. 
bathe in the mineral waters of the Ganja River, munch on tasty Jamaican Rasta food, take a weed farm tour, and hold a meditation. Book this amazing vacation for four hundred and twenty dollars. Get the Sativa Special, seven nights in Sativa dorms with ganja meals and airport transfer. Check us out at hotboxjamaica.com. That's hotboxjamaica.com. Hotbox Jamaica, a higher meditation vacation. Indigo is your source for affordable induction grow lighting. First discovered in 1891 by Nikola Tesla, Indigo lights deliver 11 years of electronic sunlight to your plants. Indigo lamps require less than half the power of traditional HID lamps. Converting to Indigo lights means you'll cut down on your power bill with less lighting. Indigo lamps also use five times less mercury than traditional fluorescent or HID lamps, making Indigo not only energy efficient but environmentally friendly as well. No more switching out lamps between vegetative and flowering stages. As nature intended, your lights get a steady dose of UV light that makes your plants grow healthier and stronger. Indigo products are manufactured in San Diego, California, and come with a written ten-year warranty. What Tesla knew, then growers know now, is that Indigo lighting is the cost-effective addition to your victory garden. To learn more or order now, go to inda-grow.com. That's inda-gro.com, or call eight seven seven four five two 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 four four to answer any of your questions. These guys really know lights. Indigo really is your sunlight in a box. Education and information. See what all the buzz is all about. It's time for hemp. It's time for hemp. You're feeling down, my friend. It'll pick you up again. Cannabis, cannabis will save the planet with cannabis. Cannabis, cannabis is a very useful weed. Cannabis, cannabis will save the planet with cannabis. I'm just, I just—I love live radio. Every day, it's another challenge. Yeah, uh, something. I'm not going to say something goes wrong, but live is definitely what it is. It's, I don't know if everybody's noticed today. We've had a lot of technical problems. Well, we haven't. Casper on the motherboard has had horrendous problems. The whole network went down, and his radio didn't. And his neighbour wanted to borrow coffee, and his dog peed on him or something. <laughs> but it's, it's amazing what, what you can get away with when it's live and it does make it so real and you never quite know what you're going to get and where you're going to go and uh, states are going legal and states are not going legal and countries are going legal and this whole cannabis hemp world at the moment, it's just, it's on fire. You can't keep up with it. Even if you stay up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there's just so much happening around the globe. So that brings us on to, you, was, you was, we were talking during the break about these questions and answers for, for uh, for for the medicine, the cannabis medicine. What was yeah, that about? what we, you know, as you know, as we, you know, we talked about the Wellbeing Now seminar. But uh, another yeah. project I, I'm really excited about being involved in is we um, do what's called the Life Well Hub, and yeah. uh, we synergize uh, VegFest UK, which I know you've mentioned on the show before. We love VegFest yeah. UK. And uh, we go along and we provide, you know, we, we basically provide an afternoon of talks at, within that event. Yeah. And um, and there's so much fun and it's great. And we get to reach so many people and it's just a, a, a privilege to be a part of. And, um, you know, me and uh, uh, Tim from VegFest were speaking recently and we thought, you know, we really need to get, um, you know, this, this message out there um, during the Life Well Hub. Um, yeah. And uh, so we, what we're going to do, Steve, is we're going to put together a panel to host a, a Q&A session mm. uh, on, on cancer cures and with, with an emphasis on, um, you know, the, the cannabis oil medicine. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, also I'd like you to invite your good self to be on that panel. Um, Fantastic, thank your, you. Your perspective is absolutely invaluable. You know, we can have all the experts we like, um, but there's, you know, the word expertise, of course, is a derivative of the word experience, and um, yes. there's no expertise like experience, and so yeah, um, it, 
it carries, you know, just like we were talking earlier, people become so disillusioned with, um, with the information yeah. they're getting, they realise they need to look for it themselves and discern for themselves what's true and what isn't. Um, likewise, people are recognising that people's personal experiences are, are something to be sought after. Um, and that's what's happened with this, you know, the, this now this age of, of connectivity and, and conversation. Um, it's not necessarily about the person that's taken the course or got the diploma. You know, if, if someone's cured their liver cancer, you need to, you need to, you need to hear what that person's got to say. Um, you know, so we need yeah. to bring all of those people we're going to bring all those people together at the same table. Um, so yeah. we've got, um, you know, experiential expertise as well as um, yeah. uh, the knowledge coming from, you know, study and, uh, and professionalism. And, um, you know, I, I haven't asked him yet, actually, but my, um, one of the guys featuring at the Wellbeing Now seminar, Carl Viali, I'd love him to join us because uh, he's just one of the most knowledgeable Carl. guys on nutrition. That's a lovely name too, isn't it? Say that again. What a lovely name. Francis. Kyle Viali, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? Kyle Viali, is it, is beautiful, beautiful, he's a beautiful man. Well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As you say, a, a lot of these patients, a lot of us patients at a time, what we call ourselves. Of course, we don't need the scientific evidence because we know it works because we're here today talking about it. But it is yeah, good to have the scientific. Yeah, and I must admit, the scientific in it is quite interesting. It's gone to the level now where I must admit I don't understand about at least 75% of it because it's too geeky, too scientific, and you really would need a proper degree, university degree, to understand some of the stuff they're getting into. But, yeah, you know, when, when you're confronted with somebody that's taken it that was end stage, and I've got loads of mates that have been through this now, you know, we've got a lot of little, well, we're all mates now because we've all faced something similar, and... Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's very empowering. Um, I've seen yeah. it when there's been there's been three of us together and somebody was talking to us about it, and they didn't know we were all three patients at a time. Yeah. And, and by the time they left, they were like, because they didn't just get it from one, they saw three people that had all been given a time-out notice. <laughs> <laughs> time to leave, book out, you know, meter's finished, mate. <laughs> And we're sitting there looking quite healthy and, and talking quite vibrant and being very passionate about some of the things that we're involved in. And they, they, it really did twist them. Whereas maybe if they were sat in a room full of doctors, maybe that wouldn't have had quite the same influence. I don't know. Yeah, Not necessarily. Funny. It depends yeah. on the person. I mean, some of us, some people yeah. will connect with that information, some people connect with the other, but we want to bring these people together mm. and we want, we want the science. We want to uh, have a clear yeah. understanding because that's powerful. That's why we're it always in, mar in marketing. We're always hearing, you know, this scientific study uh, because it is powerful. Yeah. Even uh, as cynical as we may like to be about uh, mainstream scientific information, we've got yeah. to understand that it's we we're getting the information through uh, channels that have a vested interest in something. Um, yeah. The science that's happening out there is a lot of the time there's some phenomenal studies going on. There's some phenomenal yeah. discoveries when it comes to the you know this kind of stuff. We're not necessarily getting that information channeled down to us because of the corporate investments in in different information. Um, so it's how it's how it's how information's used. It's how things are taken yeah. out of context. There's a input on things. But science itself, of course, is wonderful. It's a method for discernment. A method yeah. for uh, discovering what is true and um, you know there's a lot like you say there's a lot of wonderful science and right now there's ongoing studies it's really exciting they're, they're doing studies this year on motor neuron disease and we'll have the results in next year um, there's yeah. so many things going on there's going to be they, we're going to reach the time of critical mass um, you know facilitated by again the conversation the flow of conversation between everyone because these, this information is readily available to us now and it wouldn't have been before um, so it's an inevitability that we this, these issues must be pushed further, um, yes. you know, into the into the highlight, into the into the mainstream, and have got to be dealt with. And, and look at what you know we're looking at in America with the states there yep. um, making it legal. I mean, yep. um, this is obviously indicative of all of that. Uh, and of course, that's happening through people talking and yep. the science. Well, and people and talking science. about the and science. people walking the talk because again, in the states, a lot of the energy is now been revolving around the children. Uh, because they're seeing the children cured. It's yeah. undeniable, yeah. unmistakable proof. It's like, can I group all you raw food, vegetarian, vegans together, right, just for the sake of this conversation? It's like, when you meet somebody that's, like, I remember meeting David Wolfe years ago when he first came to England, and the man was talking about raw food, which was a totally odd concept to us, yeah? But you could just see by looking at the man that he was walking his talk. When you meet yeah. a lot of, 
raw food people, the, the energized ones, the ones that really know about what they're putting inside of their body, yeah, you can see that what they're talking about is they're walking the talk. It's like me. I look okay for somebody that had end-stage liver cancer. So straight away, we, we we're our own guinea pigs, aren't we? We're doing our own science on ourselves, yeah? yeah. And I know through knowing Sky and Kenny and people like that, that they've been involved in raw food for quite a long time. And they're forever adapting it and changing it. So the information yeah. that they most probably had 10 years ago has completely changed to what the information that they've got now. Yeah. That's right. It's so important to be, yeah. to be open and flexible because if we yeah. get, start getting attacked with an ideology, um, we may miss the fact that it's not working for us anymore. Oh, um, you know, and that's happened with a lot of people with, um, you know, um, whether it's you know 100% vegan diets or 100% raw food diets that might not be working for them for whatever reason, yeah. uh, if they're coming from an ideological place. It may be difficult for them to adapt and change. So it's good to stay open and flexible to information and experience. I mean, I certainly have done that the whole way when it comes to lifestyle decisions, and that's benefited yeah. me um, because the changes I've made, which were sometimes surprising, sometimes weren't changes I necessarily wanted to make have benefited me, you know. But but coming back, I want to really um, mention you said about you know uh, children, um, you know, using the medicine, the cure for children. Mm. Um, one thing that's so uh, meaningful, so powerful, so interesting to me in my work is um, Dr. Courtney um, bringing us yeah. the information about the eight-month-old baby with the yeah. inoperable brain tumor oh. that he treated. What the world treated successfully. And he's a raw cannabis man. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. they use they use the oil on the pacifier of this baby, of the yeah. dummy. Um, yeah. the, you know, the, the interesting thing about that is this, is that um, you will always face the possibility that a healing protocol has been successful because of the placebo effect. Um, and to be very clear, because not everybody understands the placebo effect is actually a very real um, yeah. manifestation, it's a physical manifestation of healing. It's not, yeah. um, you know, culturally we're, we're kind of, we have this misunderstanding that it's, um, that people, they weren't really sick and they've had a, a something yeah. they thought was going to heal them and it, what it did was expose they weren't really sick. I mean, that's the idea yeah. that we have culturally, it's, a, it's completely wrong. The placebo effect is an example of the mind-body connection of how uh, the mind can heal the body and it, the healing that happens is very, very real. It can happen with almost anything. I mean, we've got it medically documented of, you know, oh, so absolutely. many. Absolutely. Well, and one of my favorite little bits is chemo by World Health Organization cures 2.7 people. If you go to Lourdes in France, which is the, the, the little bit of the Holy Magdalena, Mary, right, that, it's a healing place where people go there and they get healed by the Mary, Mother, be bless her. And they drink the holy water from there. Apparently, the success rate is 5.7. Yeah. Now, when they've tested the water, when, you know, people have been there, it's exactly the same water as what's down the river, down the road. So that's <laughs> it's either it has been blessed and touched by the spirit of Mary Magdalene or, or whatever, whatever spirit has touched that, that could be a true fact. And I'm pleased for that because the people that got healed there, and again, it doesn't matter how they got healed, whether it was through cannabis, whether it was through conventional treatment, on whether it is through a miracle cure, because in a sense it's all miracle cures. The main thing is, is they got healed. Yeah? And as you yeah. say, in the real, in, in this scientific world we live, Lords is a bit of a misnomer because the walk was the same. So that is the power of belief. Yeah? And of course that could Absolutely. Work. The power of belief and, is and, fantastic. You know, it's, it's, this does, when, when we start to understand that you know the scientific mechanisms behind those kind of healing, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't contradict anyone's spiritual beliefs because no. um, if if they if they feel that prayer has healed them, well, um, what is prayer? I mean, is prayer really um, about talking to a, a god? Um, is it is it about asking questions, or is prayer actually the feeling that we have? You know, if if we see prayer, uh, the language of prayer as a feeling rather than talking. Um, it's not the English language. The universe doesn't speak English. But what if the universe or God? Doesn't it? Might I thought everybody spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> There's people who don't speak English. Oh my God! Has somebody told Queen Victoria? <laughs> <laughs> so God so doesn't speak feeling, English. Hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That's a good <laughs> theological debate. That one. Yeah. yeah. Being <laughs> omnipresent. Yes, he would, or she, or it, or that. <laughs> Does it speak? <laughs> <laughs> it's all vibration. That's an interesting one, that. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. So, 
So scientifically, you'd be looking at the same thing when it comes to placebo effect, is, is how people are feeling and how those feelings are manifesting, um, you know, health in their body or yeah. uh, acting or disabling the, the innate self-repair mechanisms within their body. Yeah. Um, the, the interesting, the fascinating thing about a baby healing from the cannabis oil because that rules out the placebo. The baby, of course, yes. had no belief about that medication. So that's really fascinating because what that does is show that cannabis oil beyond anything that could be attributed to the mind-body connection yeah. and the power of belief. Cannabis oil yeah. works. There is a science behind cannabis oil that shows on a microscope, if you like, how it works. And the microscope can be an MR scanner, it can be a blood test. There is various scientific tests to show how it works, why it works, and when it works. That's for sure. But then again, I believe it's got magic in it too. Yeah. <laughs> There's always going to be a bit in there. You see, the scientists are always good at telling you what they do know, but they never tell you what they don't know. And the thing is, it's like the, the universe, isn't it? It's 90% dark matter, which they don't know what it is. <laughs> and the other 10%, right. they only know about what half a percent of that is, but they big that yeah, one up. Yeah. Yeah. We Even don't know. The main, we know. The main, the main is that we have facilities now where either through raw food, and I know we discussed this before, raw food and love and clean air and clean water, and, can, and, 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 and not just cannabis, because there is many other cures out there. Cannabis is my favourite. Cannabis is the one that worked for me, and cannabis definitely is in vogue at the moment, and cannabis is definitely one of the most quick-term effective medicines that we can use. But there is vitamin C out there. There's dietary change. If you eat properly, you're most probably never going to catch any disease anyway, and there's all that. But we're just so lucky at the moment that we're actually accessing that information because the alternative, what they're giving to us as medicine, does not work. No. That's for sure. Well, you know, from a personal perspective, I, of course, was, because uh, I was so very ill growing up, yeah. and um, I, I was medicated to such a degree that yeah. the experiences I've had through detoxifying from, that, from yeah. those pharmaceuticals They've been yeah. the most powerful um, uh, experience that I've had to uh, detox. I've never, I've never had experience. And when I'm, when I say that, I mean I've smelled and tasted the medication that I had when mm. I was a child while mm. detoxifying it from the very organs of my body. Mm. Um, I've never ever had the experience of detoxifying and smelling and tasting, you know, some processed food or some this and the other. I think some of the most um, toxic. Uh, substances we're getting as we're growing up can be through through medication certainly over medication yeah. um, I mean yeah. if I'm if I'm experiencing as I did uh, detoxifying from medication I took perhaps almost 30 years ago you know mm. that's been locked inside my body and of mm. course that's in in the way that's been in yeah. the way of my body you know functioning optimally because that yeah. shouldn't be in there yeah. And it's, it's, it's like removing a splinter from a cut on your arm. When you, yeah. you know, until you remove that splinter, your arm won't be able to heal as well as yeah. until you heal it. And your body's already try, always trying to heal itself, but until mm -hmm. you remove that splinter, that physical, it can't. Um, and yeah. so this is this is um, from a, an internal point of view um, where detoxification comes in. And like I say, the um, the pharmaceuticals, going from my own perspective and experience, I would say, are a great hindrance a lot of the time. Yeah. It's very hard to meet anybody that's actually had a good experience of pharmaceuticals. <laughs> it is, isn't it? There's a few out there. I mean, the thing, the thing is, my, 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 bro my brother a, few, a couple of years ago had a seizure and he, his life was saved through um, in the accident emergency department. Of course, he came out with all this appreciation for uh, the hospital staff. And of course, that's absolutely right. We're, we, sometimes absolutely we get right. lost. And, and lose context absolutely that's all wonderful um, yeah. there's also this side of things as well we're not talking about the doctors and the nurses and the people that no. are saving people's lives we're talking about no. industries corporations Industry. we're talking about a profit driven yeah. machine uh, that doesn't necessarily uh, value our well-being anywhere near as it does value uh, its, its profit and its income and of yeah. course that profit name can only be maintained through a lack of well-being and not the promotion of well-being and that's of course the great contradiction yeah. and misadventure in the whole pharmaceutical industry and it being our predominant method of, of uh, healing intervention. Well a wiser man than me once said that once you start monetizing food and healthcare you're on a, on a rocky road yeah? because they're both essentials and they're both fundamental rights and as soon as you start putting profit margins on them that goes out the window 
And unfortunately, that seems to be what's happened, doesn't it? They've monetized the food system, so it's not food, it's factory food, processed food. Well, you don't have processed food or factory food. It grows in the ground. <laughs> it's called a farm. <laughs> it goes under sunlight and water. Yeah. And it's the same with the other, isn't it? With the healthcare, you know, it's come to the point now where the medicine, slash and cut, accident emergencies, lots of wonderful doctors, lots of wonderful nurses, but unfortunately the medicine side now is somewhat lacking and it's not working and it's not curing people. It just seems to be another but, pill know, for they, another pill for another pill. Yeah, yeah, they, um, um, yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, to, to not bring in, uh, you know, other dimensions of, uh, of wellness approaches yeah. is just a bizarre idea. And we've, we've, thought we were in, we've been convinced that we should be afraid of those. Um, and again, oh. it's just a bizarre idea. And it's Especially only, when you look at the people that are involved in it. You see, you've only got to look at the people that are involved in these industries to see that they are well. <laughs> hey, well, listen, right, give a shout out for the websites. We better give a shout out uh, next weekend, isn't it? Not this weekend. Next weekend, we're down at the Raw Fest in Raw Lawn. Fest, yeah. Yeah, it's coming round. So I'll see you there. Your personal website yeah. is? The uh, wellbeingnowseminar.co.uk. Got that one. My and one is check... Hemwork. Oh, sorry, go, go, go. You, you go. And also check out Life Well Hubs at VegFest UK as well. Brilliant. My one's always called to hempworkscharityuk.org. A big shout out going out for the Brighton uh, Alliance thing going on next weekend. There's lots of information up on Facebook and websites about that. If you're not doing anything, get yourself down there, go and show them some support. Very important day. And we're going to be hopefully dancing around in a nice sunny field next weekend. Yeah! Doing things we like. <laughs> yeah, that's good people. Food. Good, good, good man. Right, that's it. We're done. Love you all. Thank you, Richie. See you next weekend.